welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing off Explorer's Eve Part 5, discussing everything from the death of the Witherstorm, which has already happened, to the true final fight. So without further ado, let's investigate what we need to do to beat this pack. With newfound access to the Withered Beacon, you are now incredibly powerful, considering the effects it can give. Since you can go in here, click on anything, and what do you know, permanent strength really anywhere in the world. So, make sure to do that before fighting any bosses that remain. Note that some of the bosses, like Ignis and in the future Leviathan, will require the Withered Nether Star again. Fortunately, you can craft this back right back into its Nether Star by going into Survival and putting it in this menu. So, now you have this again in order to summon those respective bosses. Since this beacon is, of course, used for crafting, well, you should probably look at its recipes. Not to mention, you need to craft things in order to summon the true final boss. But be warned, I recommend doing most of the other experiences in this pack beforehand due to the sheer difficulty. Or at least do Air Whale King first, because the Hammer of King Bee Dogs is incredibly useful here. So, Withered Beacon and its supports are crafted with star flares. I'll talk about those in a moment. And make sure to look in just enough items, and here's your various things you can do. So, by combining it with various lapis books and other miscellaneous items, you can get yourself much more powerful items. Not to mention, you can go right ahead and upgrade your tools if you get all four of your supports activated. So, through all this, you can get yourself some really good gear without having to go through all of the enchanting. And then by the end of it, you'll be able to do the true final fight. But you can craft Thalmic Paper to avoid the resummoned Witherstorm. Going through here, there are a couple things. The Nameless Sorcerer. This is a Cataclysm unused boss that has been given proper AI. And then you can resummon the Witherstorm. I'll talk about that too. No, it needs a Star Flare. And then at the end of it, we have ourselves the true final fight. It doesn't tell you what it is to add to the mystery. And you can use either arc from the Everbright or Everdawn in order to summon the Nameless Sorcerer. It will change its AI accordingly depending on what you chose. In here, we have ourselves Star Flares, and these are quite important for various things. Although they can be used for the stew recipe, that's not terribly useful though considering how rare they are, they can also be used for the Withered Support Beacons, so they're a 100% necessary part of the adventure. And there are four ways to get them. You can go to the end, and in the Outer Islands, you'll notice some randomly lit up places. Those will have star flares on them, so be sure to explore those tall end areas. Then, you could go to Blue Skies, and Frost Spirits from the Everbright, no other alternative in the Everdawn, and then their blinding dungeons in there will give star flares. Be warned though, you do need a charm of keeping to bring them back. So, you'll have to beat Arachnark, really, really difficult, or you have to beat the Nature Dungeon Starlit Crusher, relatively easy. Which means, I wouldn't recommend the Everdon. And then, the final method is the Nameless Sorcerer. In case you don't want to challenge the Everdon's bosses, or Everbright's bosses for that matter, then, all you need to do is beat the Blinding Dungeon, ignore the second dungeon in Blue Skies, come back, and summon the Nameless Sorcerer, who will also give a bunch of emeralds and diamonds to make the rest of the beacon easy. Since I've already discussed those other three options over here, I'm going to only be talking about the Nameless Sorcerer in terms of Star Flares, since it's a completely new boss for the most part. You need three items to summon it. You either need the Ethereal or Dusk Arc, Note, Ethereal gives you permanent speed 0.5, so I'd keep that. This only gives you invisibility while crouching, not very useful. So, I'd toss that in there. So, go to the Everdawn. I find the Alchemist to be easier anyways. And then, two Tainted Dust, and then a Totem of Undying. Screen Shaking, and then they'll summon the boss. I am currently using Unenchanted Char White Gear. And, it, this is probably below average. I also have a Command Box Sword with Sharpness 4, and this fight is a little crazy. If you used a Dusk Arc, then you're going to end up having to deal with potions in this fight. Note, it likes teleporting you around, and otherwise being a jerk. 
So, what you need to do is balance all the various things happening in the fight at once while you handle multiple evokers. Note that it's pretty tough to figure out which one's the real one, but once you do, it will typically teleport once you hit it. So generally, you need to be very careful in this fight, since the Vexes, of course, have very good gear, and magic damage is used plentifully here. But once you defeat this boss, you'll get a bunch of good items. For the rest of this fight, I've gotten myself much better gear, enchanted with Protection 3, the Bulwark of Flame from Hydra, and then a pretty good crossbow. So you're going to have to be quite good at this fight. Notice that arrows aren't going to work though. These are really for the Vexes. And considering the plentiful usage of magic damage, well, you're going to have to make sure you dodge a lot of attacks and be sure to heal frequently. It's a very tough boss fight. Don't expect to waltz in here and get all of your diamonds from this, since it's going to utterly destroy you. Combined with its arrow resistance, you're going to have to play really smart in order to beat this fight, especially since it's going to be long, vex-filled, potion-filled, and otherwise really tough. So be ready for this. And then, if you can land a couple hits on it, it will go down pretty quick. It doesn't have the most health. So overall, avoid getting poisoned and avoid dying. For some closing remarks about this fight, one, the real one will have a name, the other ones will not, and two, make sure to use your withered beacon, it will be very useful in order to keep your health up, but once you kill it, you'll notice you get a ton of stuff. So already, most of your emeralds needed, so you might have to refight, most of your diamonds needed, you probably have one or two diamonds lying around from Char White, so that's fine, and then 10 star flares. So that's 6 stews, and then 4 beacons, which means this is a very profitable way to do it, but it might be worth your time to go somewhere else to get star flares, and then refight this for the diamonds and emeralds. Also, there's the totem of vexation. What you do is we right click on an entity, and it will summon a bunch of vexes to kill it for you. And note, they are quite powerful. You can use this to exploit a lot of bosses with low range like the netherite monstrosity, in order to kill them pretty quick. So, with the Nameless Sorcerer out of the way, there is two optional things you can do before the true final boss, and both of them are incredibly difficult. First off, we have Ignis, and this is an optional super boss, found at the top of the Twilight Forest final castle. And this boss is not to be taken lightly. Like, this is absurdly difficult. You might think I'm a little overprepared here and looking kind of dorky, but uh, nope, this probably is barely enough as well. So make sure that you have the best gear, and don't come into here without any good mobility, so make sure that you have at least a peacock feather fan or some of the armors from the aether, since defense alone won't help against this dude since, well, he has this little evil thing where he deletes your armor points, so that's nice. Once you're presumably ready for the fight, I personally always have doubts about being ready about this fight, there are one final item you might want to use. If you're not going for an Aether set, use the Monstrous Helmet, it's the best set in the pack. And then, combine your Infernal Ashes with your Withered Nether Star, and then place it down. Some screen shaking, and then you'll see the absolute monstrosity that Ignis is as a fight. So, you can see. He's uh, already going to start off with some evil attacks, so make sure that you're very careful around him. Although this doesn't seem too bad at first, it gets worse once you realize he always ground slams. When he fires those purple projectiles, reflect them back at him to destroy his shield. He gets faster, but he does become a little easier. So Hammer of King B-Dogs and Fortification Scepter are disabled during this fight, you're welcome. And it's a very, very tough fight. It might seem pretty decent right now, but you'll notice it will get very tough. And he will also disable your shield with every melee attack. Like that. If you don't block that, then you get impaled. So make sure to jump over or glide away from his attacks, since he will release an onslaught of attacks. Those fire circles there also are not helping the situation. If he hits you, Notice my armor points went down. You can block his impale for some reason. 
but yes, every time he hits you, he takes away two armor points. Well, four, technically. So, keep that in mind. If you get hit, stay away. And if you're on fire, he will also inflict some debilitating debuffs. But, once you deflect two projectiles, he is a lot easier to attack, but he's also a lot more aggressive, so keep that in mind. Once his shield is down, he's significantly easier to hit. And he has a lot of health, although it will go down pretty quick. Problem, he will uppercut you and uh, ground slam you. But luckily, with very good timing with the Peacock Feather Fan, you can use it like a shield. I don't know why this works, but it does. So, with his shield down, I'd recommend doing it even if you're not super good at the fight because it makes it go by faster. Then, make sure that, of course, he's not impaling you constantly. But, generally, make sure that you're using ranged attacks a lot. The Void Rune is a very good one. The Totem of Vexation is a very easy way to get rid of him. So, if you can handle the Nameless Sorcerer, that's nice. The Scepter of Twilight also works because it deals magic damage. So, like this, you can walk away while repeatedly firing at him. Although, be very careful of his various attacks, since he can cover a lot of ground quite quickly. So, you can see how I'm already losing here, and yeah, make sure you have the Bulwark of Flame for this one to dash away as well. Once in Phase 2, he gets a little bit faster, but it's usually nothing to worry about. Just make sure that you're not making dumb mistakes, and take extreme caution around those fire circles, since their range will keep expanding. So, the only thing I really have to say is, when he does his multiple slams with his sword in a row, if he does it to sword down, then the shockwave will go outward. If he does it hilt down, like the little pommel right there, and he slams it down, then it goes inward. So he does alternating attacks like that, so make sure to run in and out, in and out, and then you'll be able to dodge it. But note, this is a very tough fight. No need to master it if you have enough charms of life and good attacks like that. So be careful, he reflects arrows when you're too close, well, too far from him. And yeah, I don't have too much more to say since this is such a tough fight. Once in phase 3, he'll start going down pretty quick. Because although he's super aggressive, generally, you can start using a little bit more risky tactics, since you know that if you do it right, it will end. Notice, right there, he slammed his sword into the ground, and it forces everything towards him. So it might be a little inconsistent in phase 3. But once he's down, then you'll get some very good items. But this attack right here is super dangerous, so stay away from those fire circles. And then, once you deal with the final hit, then you'll get some very good loot. You'll get your Withered Nether Star back regardless if you win, three Ignitium Ingots, and then the Different Sword. And this thing's DPS is obscene. So if you want to have the highest DPS until you beat the Wither Storm, beat Ignis. But be careful, this does regenerate your opponent's health, which means it's really good for comboing, but less effective if you have to weave in and out. With Ignis down, you can use his stuff in order to craft better stuff. So, combining Ignitium and an Infected Steel Ingot, going to cover that shortly, you can get the Incinerator. I'm going to be honest though, the Incinerator is not better than the Evolved Command Block Sword for the time being, excluding the extra reach helping during the true final boss fight, since you don't have to charge your attacks then. You can also change your pickaxe into the Infernal Forge, which is the Netherite Monstrosities drop, and that's pretty good. Also, you can get some really good armor, matches with the Bulwark of Flame, which is dropped by Hydra instead of Ignis hilariously. And once you have all that, you have to beat Ignis multiple times in order to get the full set, you'll look something like this. So, looking like an absolute boss. Although, I recommend wearing this instead. Since, although it makes you look like a complete idiot, it's just better. Because the Ignition Helmet isn't going to give you that much more defense. Not to mention... In order to get an Ignitium, you need to combine his ingots with netherite armor. So, be ready to fight another monstrosity if you discarded the netherite. Next up, the Resummoned Witherstorm. If you haven't fought Ignis, there is no reason to ever do this, since all of its drops come from the infected steel ingot being combined with Ignitium, until a future version adds the Eye of the Storm and the Formidablade from normal Cracker's Witherstorm mod. 
But with that out of the way, you can resummon the Wither Storm in any dimension that doesn't have a roof over it. As in, you can summon it literally just anywhere that's not the Nether or the Bowels. So do this, and then it'll resummon the Wither Storm. Make sure you have Super TNT and eight Tainted Dust so you can immediately formid a bomb it once it reaches Phase 5.5. So take this time to immediately start running, since it will start chasing immediately. So once you run, then here it is. It's gonna be a little derpy for a moment, and then it'll fly up. So this wither storm's generally a little bit more aggressive than the last wither storm, but there isn't too much to talk about. The symbiote is a bit harder, but make sure you get your teratoma, since that will be used in order to summon the symbiote now. So, it looks like this, craft it like this, go next to the wither storm, use it, fight the symbiote, and then you can open the hole on its head after the, the Fermita Bomb. So, nothing too much to talk about here. So, here we are, back in the bowels with another command block. Generally, the wither storm has more health on the symbiote, is more aggressive, uses later phase attacks sooner, etc. But they're not very important since if you've gotten this far, you've probably fought Ignis or are just going here for Thalmic Paper. By the way, you can craft that with the Withered Beacon. But anyways, go in here and make sure that you have really good gear. Either get Ignitium in order to not die or Valkyrie slash Gravitite or at this point you could probably get Stratus since that gives you an ultimate jump in order to curb stomp this fight. So. Make sure you play this fight relatively normally. The first phase is relatively the same. The second phase is a, a little bit harder. And then the third phase is the uh, most broken thing in this mod pack. Don't worry, it's getting nerfed soon. But uh, I'm just going to say this. It is absolutely evil. So you have to go through all the normal stuff. Kill the mobs. Kill the symbiote deal with this piglin right here who happens to be wearing fiery armor with a, a phoenix axe and is also a piglin brute so yeah have fun there's nothing else to really say besides this fight is darker than usual so sorry mobile users and the third phase is absolutely evil so make sure you bring a bunch of golden apples to this and have really good mobility along with a staircase up to here since it will have the head spawn in then you'll have a bunch of mobs, and then you have to break spawners, and then you have to go hit the command block within like 15 seconds or so before it resummons the heads and spawners. So, pretty evil. Luckily, every time you kill the heads, you have more time to attack the command block, so that way you're not stuck if you're not the best at the game. Just for a glimpse of the madness that the final phase is, you can see elite mobs everywhere, spawners, and then you have the symbiote. I killed the wither storm heads uh, using really high strength, so just a pretender there. Not to mention uh, a little bit of inebriation, so have fun having uh, uncontrollable controls. So anyways, this fight is pretty evil. With that fight out of the way, craft anything you want out of the infected steel ingot, and then it's time to gear up for the true final fight. You don't have to get all of this stuff, I mean it's a very long list, but get some of this. So in here you can see a bunch of things. I recommend getting one of these three armor sets. The best one would be Stratus. Ignitium would be good. Valkyrie is also good. I don't recommend the Ignitium helmet, but you could still get it anyways if you fight Ignis twice. Monstrous helmet is the best helmet. Get it if you're not doing Valkyrie or Stratus. You technically could use Gravitite. A little risky though. And then any of these tools. Of course, the more you get, the better. And note, make sure you bring ender pearls. I know I didn't put them here, but get ender pearls. A golden dart shooter is still useful by this point. Just keep whatever gear that you use against a wither storm in this. Make sure you bring a command set and then something for good mobility like the peacock, feather fan, and bulwark of the flame. So once you have this stuff here, then you're likely ready to fight. So, of course, don't get all of that, but evaluate how useful each of those items are, and then think about bringing them. Since this is a three-phase boss fight, and you're more or less going to be fighting almost every boss in the pack. Once you're ready, 
Well, go up to your beacon, place down seven tainted dust, and then place down your enchanted command block book. This boss fight does have checkpoints, but be careful. So now I'm going to mute, and here's the major spoiler zone. I'm going to be using this for the intro, hence why I'm muting. Anyways, now with this giant pulsing orb, uh, run. It's a permitted bomb. So, uh, I really hope you ran. So, a white screen. And then, right in the middle, you can see, one, a command block. And two, a very small pile of hardened flesh. So, wait for all this to wear off. And what do you know, it's a command block. Hit this to start the fight. Make sure you have inventory space. So, take all of your items used for this back, and then, uh, <laughs> yeah, it is going to be very chaotic. What you want to do here is run. This is why you need to get good mobility. Since this entire boss fight is mayhem. If you don't have good mobility, you are not surviving. If you don't have good offense, you're not surviving. So, I'm not going to be covering all of this because, of course, it's a very, very long boss fight. It took me over an hour because I definitely didn't try cheesing it. But, yeah, be very careful during this. In order to progress this fight, you have to hit the command block. And this is a little bit easier said than done, because the command block now hops around and tries fleeing. Of course, it's a little easier because I'm in creative, but start hitting it, and notice how many bosses there are now. So, in order to progress, you have to kill all the bosses, and then, once you kill all those bosses, you can progress. Luckily, they're pretty much normal versions, they're a little nerfed. I have strength 30, so don't take that as everything is easy here, because it's not. So now, you go around, and you kill all the bosses. It's quite difficult, and notice the chests are completely empty, so have fun. So, beat all your bosses. And then, from there, you can go in, attack again, and then there's the Warden phase. Have fun. You have to kill a Warden. It's Sonic Boom Attack, now inflicts status effects instead of damage, but uh, it is very stressful. The Warden teleports, and it does give you darkness. So, uh, get ready for a very long fight, because it's going to start attacking you like a normal Warden. So, right there. Yeah. Have fun with this fight, because you're going to have to straight up kill the warden, hence why I strongly recommend bringing a seeker bow, or something with homing if that's possible. From here, once you beat that warden, going to be very, very difficult, I'd say that's one of the hardest parts of the whole fight, start attacking the command block again. Note, you don't have to charge your attacks, hence why the incinerator, despite having low DPS, is good, because it has that extra one block reach. So doing this is straight up your best bet. So do that, and it will start spewing more mobs. And this time, you have to take down the Blue Skies bosses, both blinding tower bosses. And this can be pretty difficult. But luckily, the bosses themselves are easy. It's really the command block that's the threat here. So take them on, but we'll get stunned again. And then from here, you enter phase two. It is done with you. It doesn't want to deal with you anymore. So, what does it do? It becomes a Witherstorm. So, have fun, because this Witherstorm is special. It will never stop chasing, it cannot be permitted bomb, and it one-shots you with its heads. So, with this absurdly powerful Witherstorm, what are you supposed to do? Well, the answer is, attack it. Start shooting its heads. It can only take damage through the heads. So, when you shoot them, well, they'll all go down, and then now you can start attacking the Witherstorm. Start shooting it. You can't miss a phase if you don't attack it, but your job is to really attack it as much as you can, since it starts raining mobs. So, you don't technically have to attack it, but the less you attack it, the longer it takes. Now, it will start dashing around. Hence, I recommend a flatter area for this. Mountains can make this quite difficult. And then, you have to do this several times in order to move on to phase 3, but it gets increasingly difficult. 
Since phase two of phase two is only dashing around, it's not the most difficult thing in the world since it might accidentally drop you. With some more attacking, it will go into phase three of phase two, kill a wither. This one is literally just a normal wither, which means if you want the harbinger route, this is nothing new. So kill the wither and it's not actually that hard. But now it's angry and now it splits into three. So have fun with all the segments. Note, it will use its flaming skulls attacks in this fight. Although you can't see them because I'm in creative, it will attempt to fire at you with flaming skulls. However, if you try weaving the fight here, well, you can't do that. So it will basically become an item. It will give you your stuff back and then you can resummon it. So be careful not to accidentally go into spectator for whatever reason or go too far from it. But yes, it does have checkpoints. Once you attack it some more in this triple wither storm phase, it's going to summon three symbiotes. There's nothing much to say here. It's literally just three symbiotes. Yes, they will start attacking you. Yes, they are required. Attack it some more. You'll go through another normal phase and then it'll go to its final phase. This is, well, nine heads with small wither storms. So they will be firing a bunch of skulls at you. So of course, make sure to deal with that accordingly. In this final phase where it's absolutely destroying literally everything, the only reason why I'm not using that for the intro is because spoilers, then you can take down the segment. Once they lose all their heads, then they're down for real. And now the wither storm has been more or less defeated if you look at the health bar. So it's taken enough damage and straight up hemorrhages the command block right out of it. Which means you're ready for part 3. And it is, well, done with ya again. It straight up invents a new dimension. What does it do here? Well, it brings its broken wither storm along with it. And now you have to deal with the command block in a 1v1 fight. And this fight is ridiculous. Why? Because it uh, fires all these projectiles, shoots a bunch of dragon fireballs, and occasionally even uses a Formidabomb as an attack. So your job, swing as fast as you can and hit it as many times as you can. It will start summoning bosses from all different parts of the game and they'll be much more powerful usually. So be careful. Some funny ones include Hydra, who now moves. Then we have Arachnark, fortunately actually balanced. Sun Spirit and Ender Guardian at the same time, and then Ignis, and if you somehow beat Ignis before killing the command block and ending the fight, then even better, the Harbinger shows up without EMPs to deflect its death rays. In order to progress this fight, well, one, stay near the command block or else you get pulled like this, two, if you see this going on, run, three, attack the bosses. Every time you kill a boss, it gets stunned. And four, aim for it while it's in the air. Even when it's in the air, it can still be attacked. So make sure to do that. The more hits you do, the faster this goes by. And make sure to let the bosses get hit by the Permitabomb if possible. So now, you need to deal with all these different bosses. They're going to be mayhem. Fortunately, I have way too much strength, so they're uh, pretty easy. And, well, don't die. Luckily, if you die at this point, it will go right back to phase 3 when you come back. So, do that. And every time you attack the bosses, it will also damage, well, bosses. And if you attack the command block, it will damage both the command block and the bosses. So keep that in mind. And then, if you somehow manage to survive this catastrophe of whatever you just did to that poor withered beacon, then you can finally say that you've beaten the pack. If you can survive that fight and the desperation phase I'm not going to be covering, then you can finally unlock the elytra, which can be combined with the ignitium chestplate and the mechanical fusion anvil. The mechanical fusion anvil fortunately has a few more recipes, so you can combine things to get more OP things, and generally is not terribly balanced, but luckily you can get an unbreakable sentry shield for normal gameplay, that is if you want to play after this. Generally, this pack is not balanced around post-game, so only a few items are completely disabled, like the glass sword and the diamond minotaur axe. So, generally, this is the end. 
You have beaten Explorer Eve if you can handle that final boss fight. Since, despite how chaotic it looks, it's actually a really fun boss fight, surprisingly. Since, you're always on edge with all the Witherstorm pulling out and that, and that, and uh, it summons another boss and proceeds to pull out another thing you weren't expecting. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, and make sure to give Explorer's Eve a try. I mean, if you've gotten this far, I mean, I've kind of spoiled pretty much everything except the Dragon's Bane. So, you know, a little less surprises there, but it's a very fun mod pack, and it's constantly getting updates. So, try it out. If you don't like it, well, that can be that, but I strongly recommend it. So, either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw, out.